Okay, let's get started with our drawing of a monarch butterfly. And if you are able to print out the reference photograph, that would be helpful. It um, is something that you'll want to look at while we're drawing. I always tell my students, draw what you see, not what you know. And the cool thing we're gonna be studying about this butterfly is symmetry, which means the right side looks like the left side. And so that's what we're gonna be doing through the whole thing is comparing right side to left side when we do these shapes, when we do our big shapes, when we do measurements. So all you're gonna need is a piece of paper, a ruler, if you would like to have exact measurements or you can just wing it if you're that kind of artist, we love those too, and a pencil. And we're gonna start out with a line, a straight line that's about four inches across. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw my line in and I'm gonna draw pretty light because I'm going to erase these lines ultimately. And I want you to put a little mark at the two inch. So you're gonna draw a line that's four inches long and put a little mark at the two inch. And then from that two inch, we're gonna go straight down and we're going to make a straight line down three inches from that line, okay? And then we're gonna do the same thing on each end here. Three inch line straight down. And one way to check if you were doing a straight line, sometimes if you have it, you can put it right along the top edge of your paper, or you can just make sure that you have um, your line, the top of your ruler right along here. My ruler does not start at zero, but I'm gonna do generally close to a three inch line. And the same on this side. And if you want, you can, again, make sure your uh, ruler is lined up with the top there. That gives you a fairly square end here. And we're gonna go down three inches on this side. Okay, and then we'll connect these at the bottom. And one way to check if you've done a perfect square is to measure from corner to corner. And those numbers should be the same from this corner and diagonally this way. So that tells me whether I am square or not. And it looks like I am. Okay, a couple more measurements if you are measuring. Again, if you wanna just wing it, you're welcome to do that. I'm gonna go half an inch in from this line on the bottom, half an inch in on this line on the bottom. And the reason I'm doing this is to help you with your symmetry, okay? And then on our middle line, we're gonna go a little over one inch down. Just go like a couple marks past an inch. Make a little mark there, that's the top of his head. Okay, and then from our center line, we're gonna go out just a little bit past a half. If you know how to do measurements and you can go to 5 eighths, that's what you're gonna do. Otherwise, find your half inch mark and go a little bit past it on both sides. And those are all marks that we're gonna need. Now, let's make a straight line from the top corner to our first little mark there, and that's gonna give us the general angle of our wings. Top corner down to our first little hash mark here. And that's gonna tell us the angle of our wings. All right. So on your hash mark that you made here, that's gonna be the head basically. So we can make a little oval here for the head. And I know that I don't, I want it to end up, oh, about half, oh, three eighths of an inch or a little bit up from the bottom. It doesn't have to be an exact number here. Okay, and then we're gonna go in here and make kind of a long diamond shape on both sides, long diamond, okay. And then it will just go all the way down to our mark here, and that is the body. And you may want to fuss around with that. It's pretty narrow body at the bottom. So make sure you make that pretty narrow. Make mine a little skinnier. Okay. 
So that tells me that's the body of my butterfly. Now I can go back in here and a little ways below the head. So this actually kind of curves underneath his head there. I'm not going to start right at his head, but a little further down. And I'm going to go from what would be, I guess, the shoulder of a butterfly if they have those. And I'm going to go up in a curved, soft curve line to the top corner. Soft curve from here up to that top right hand corner. Okay, now here's where we start with our symmetry. We want to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm constantly looking back and forth from left to right. I'm going to go up, soft curve to the corner. And one way you can tell if you've done the same is look at this shape in here. Does this shape match this shape? That will help you with your symmetry. Okay. All right, so now just about where this, the corners on your long diamond are, that's where his wings are gonna come out to this line. So they, they curve just a little bit at the bottom and then out to this line. All right, do one on that side and then we're gonna match symmetry, the same thing on the other side. And it's kind of crazy how hard it is to get things to look the same from one side to the next. It's kind of like our hand has two different countries. On the right side, if you're right-handed, everything feels really comfortable. When you go this way, it kind of feels like you're drawn with somebody else's hand. Okay, now let's do the bottom part. And this basically comes out, oh, let's drop down. If we're going to measure from here to the bottom, we're going to go about halfway. So halfway between where it gets wider on his body and the bottom. Pick a spot there. And that's where we're going to choose for our bottom wings to come out of. Two little marks here. Okay. And they are going to come down to the little mark we made at the bottom here. So they will come out a little bit of a curve and then down. Okay. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Again, watch your symmetry, kind of try to copy from right side to left side. Comes down and curves to this side. And again, I'm comparing my shapes here. The triangle that I made on the inside tells me if I've matched my shapes from left to right. Okay, you might wanna just play around with those until they look like they match. Symmetry, symmetry. We want it to look exactly the same. That's one beautiful thing about these butterflies. Okay, now this is going to curve, soft curve here, and it's going to go around and connect on this line. Okay, so we've got a curve, soft curve that comes up and connects right here on this line. And then we'll do the same thing over here. Soft curve that comes up and around to this side. And again, I'm comparing the triangles that I just made. Are they similar? That tells me if my lines are symmetrical back and forth. Okay. Then this comes up and connects. And I just want to have a little triangle right here. That's what I'm looking for. That's how I know when to go back in. I just want a little triangle here. And I'll do the same thing on this side. I'm trying to make it a matching little triangle over here. So I'm comparing this triangle now to this triangle. See if I've got them close to the same. Okay. So we've got the basic outlines. Now at the top here, we're gonna go just a little bit outside of the box, then come back down in to this line and a little bit of a long S curve, okay? So I came up to the top, a little bit of a curve outside of the box, then back in and around to my first line. And that finishes out that wing. Then I'll do the same thing on the other side. I go outside of the curve a little bit, come back in, a long S curve. 
And again, I'm comparing both sides to make sure that I've got pretty close to the same from left to right. Okay. So we have the basic outline now of our monarch butterfly. So now you can go in and erase the lines that you used for a map. We don't need any part of the box on the outside or the inside of our butterfly. So go in and erase those lines. And you may have an eraser on your pencil or you might have another gum eraser that you want to use. We just want to get rid of all the lines because that was really just our map to tell us where to put things correctly. Now, it would be good for you to practice this without the boxes by just looking at the butterfly and comparing, comparing, comparing which is something that I encourage my art students to do all the time. Draw what you see, not what you know. You could probably draw a butterfly without all these lines and it would look just fine, but this helps you practice symmetry. So everything looks exactly the same from left side to right side. And that's what we're learning about today is how to make things symmetrical. Not many things in nature are but the butterfly's wings usually are best drawn fairly symmetrical. There's the odd difference from one side to the other, and you would notice that if you looked really closely at this butterfly. It actually has one wing that's a little bit bigger than the other one. This one is a little bit different shape than this one if you were just to get to measuring. But now we're gonna go in and we are going to draw all the patterns on the wings. So let's look at what we're drawing here. We're gonna start with this shape on each wing. And so it goes about halfway from here to here. If I were to measure this in half, you can see that's about how long it is. And you can decide the width, but it's gonna go up. It's got a little bit of a long diamond shape and it's about halfway. So if I were to measure from here to here, I would say this is about halfway. So that tells me I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna go up to that line, make a little bit of a point, pointed end, and then come back down and it's gonna get narrower at the bottom. Okay, so I'm starting right here at the body. I'm following alongside the wing. I go up to my little halfway point Kind of tuck it in, make it like a little bit of a rounded point end. And then I come back to the body and get narrower at the bottom. Okay, now the trick is to do it the same on the other side. So I'm just going to draw a visual line across here to tell me this is about where it stops on this side. And this time I'm going to start at the point and come back down, follow the top of the wing, bring it right in like the other one. Then I'm going to do the same thing, a little bit of a pointed end there. Then I'm going to come back, narrow. So I'm looking to see if this one looks similar to this one. Always be comparing them back and forth. Okay? Now, from here, I'm going to go, as if I were drawing a line out from the top of this, I'm going to do one line, two lines, three lines, and one more at the bottom, four lines. Okay, now I didn't do mine even. What I'm looking for is that I want these to be pretty even between them. So I, I draw one down here, one up here, and then I want to divide that pretty evenly. So the space one, two, three is pretty even. Okay, so we started at the top here. We drew one line out here. 
We did another one along the bottom, up off of the bottom of the wing, and then two in the middle. They're kind of evenly spaced in. Then once you've drawn those, I want you to kind of make little pointed ends on them. I'll drop that down a little bit. Pointed end. Oh, actually, they're they're kind of soft points. Let's call them that. Okay. And they just kind of follow the contour of the wing down as to where they go out. So soft point, soft point. Okay, and then I'm going to come back in and draw a line along the bottom. So this is a wide line here. This is a wide line here that separates between them. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So we went out from the top, matched that line there. We went one out from the bottom, and it was a little higher up off the wing. And then separate that into three equal parts. Okay. And then once you've done that, you'll bring a line down. It kind of borders the first one. And then you make those soft points on the end of each of those. Okay, and I'm looking back and forth, trying to make them pretty similar. It might not be perfectly exact, but I do want to be paying attention so I can try to get them similar. Okay. How are we doing? All right, now let's do the bottom one. So this bottom one, there's a little bit of a triangle on each side here. So let's go ahead and draw that in. Just a little bit of a triangle where the black is. Okay. Now right out of the middle of this, I'm going to make a shape that also goes about halfway from here to here. So if I measure that, I'm going to put a little dot here, halfway from here to here. Put a little dot there. That tells me where I want this to end. All right, so I'm going to start here, and I'm going to go up on this side and then down to the point. Do the same on the other side. Up on this side and down to the point. Maybe my point a little far out. But I'm just looking at these two lines. They want to be similarly shaped, okay? Now I'm going to round the end off, go back out kind of like this long diamond like we did before, round the end off, back narrow. So these two shapes should look the same. They almost look like um, the bottom of a bowling pin, kind of. Okay, so I'm comparing back and forth. Do these look similar? All right, now right at the bottom of this, I'm going to do another little kind of rounded candy corn shape. Except somebody bit the top off. Same over here. And it goes almost down. Two candy corn shapes at the bottom. Okay. Now, on the inside of this, I'm going to draw three shapes to fill that in, okay? So I'm going to come up here. Let's start, well, let's just start here. So I'm going to go down right beside it, come over kind of a rounded bottom, and then go up almost to the first shape, and then enclose that in. Okay, do that on both sides. Come down beside it, rounded bottom, and then up and close. And those two shapes should look similar. Okay, now I'm going to do it again. And this time it's going to go all the way to the top. So it starts down here, comes right alongside it, rounded bottom, and this time it goes all the way up and then closes. OK, 
Okay, same thing on this side. I'm going to start right beside this, come down, around, and go all the way to the top. Oops, I kind of went crooked on that one. Go all the way to the top, and then close that one. Okay, and then there's just one skinny one left back here. Just fill the rest of your wing on both sides. Fill it up and hopefully those are similar sizes from left to right. Kind of look back and forth between them. See if they're close to being symmetrical. That's what we're looking for, okay? Now we're going to do the same thing on this other side. And you're going to fit almost four in. So we're going to come down, up, and these are a little shorter, down, leave more room at, near the edge here, and just keep filling those in. one at the top here. Okay, so we do the same thing on both sides. And they should be fairly symmetrical to the other side. I'm just comparing my shapes back and forth over here, so... Oops, I missed one. I put four on the other side. So make sure you do the same number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five. Make sure they are even. Okay, both sides. Now we'll finish up on top. And there's just some like jelly bean shaped orange circles up here. So two over here and same shape. Almost like jelly beans. This one's a little bit wider of a jelly bean on both sides. And then more of a circle one. Kind of a squished jelly bean. And I'm checking the distance away for both of them. Back and forth. The circle is actually in, and the squished one is a little further out. So check that. Okay. And then there's this little tiny dots. And they're not all the same. So make them some bigger, some smaller, closer. But they kind of go around the base of the hole. And they get maybe a little elongated as they come up to the top here. So same thing around the bottom. Okay. And then we do, there's two rows actually. I'm going to make this a little bit wider at the bottom here. Because there's two rows of white here at the bottom for just a short ways. So I'm going to make mine a little bit longer down here. 
kind of wavy along the edge. And I'll go back in with my dots. Try to fit two rows with just about three or four along the base there. Okay. And then we'll do the same thing on the top wings. And again, right along the edge, tiny skinny little dots and they're very close to the edge. Little teeny tiny dots. Okay, and then a row of bigger dots kind of come around and follow those down and fill up the space. So do the same thing over here. Little tiny dots just along the edge. And then a bigger row of dots that go down. Okay. And then the last thing would be our little antennas. And they just come out of the top. Kind of like a curved V. They would have little teeny tiny tips on the antenna. All right. So we have finished your drawing of a monarch butterfly. So you have lots of options now. You can just leave it like this and go back over it with pen and ink if you want. Or you can colored in with colored pencil, or you could transfer this onto a canvas and you could paint it. Um, either way, we love to see what you create with your own drawings. And you can follow along with the reference color on this butterfly and color it just like the one in the picture, or you can make it your own. So be sure and check out our other classes at artwithlisa.com. You are welcome to upload your photo in the comments section here. And we're glad that you joined us here for this class of painting, drawing a monarch butterfly with Art with Lisa. Have a great day and keep creating.